you were suffering for two years before you got the diagnosis and you're a teenager. So what was that like, you know, getting that news at 16? I think at 16, I didn't really, wasn't really able to understand when they said six months to live, all of that. My family, of course, felt it more. I was kind of in shock. Yeah. You know, I wanted my face to clear up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, yeah, you're like, 16. I want these rashes on. Yeah, I don't like, want I the want rashes to go. in high school. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, I didn't really understand that existential threat. But I can say, you know, I, I remember being at the nephrologist's office with my mother and my grandmother. Now, my grandmother's a Holocaust survivor. She came here as a refugee to give her family a better life. My mom was five when they came in on a boat through Ellis Island, right? So I'm first born in America, going to live the American dream. Mm-hmm. And we're sitting in that office where the nephrologist gives us the news about my kidneys failing and, you know, experimental treatments or death, horrible thing. And I remember going home that night and my grandmother was so tough. She survived the war. She was, Mm -hmm. I never saw her cry. I never saw, you know, she just was so strong. The only time I've ever seen her cry was that night when she was on her knees, just begging God to, to spare me and to take her instead. And it was just, I mean, it's just, and it's something that I teach my patients now is that you don't go through disease by yourself. Mm -mm. Everyone who loves you suffers. And it's why you need to fight for yourself and take care of yourself because everybody needs you. 